Um, so, uh, it is pretty commonly accepted that in recent years, about 2001 to present, there's been an increased rate of seismic activity. Um, this is reflected in a couple papers. One notably was a guy named Ellsworth um, who pu published a paper in Science News Journal. Um, simultaneously, there has been a takeoff in the use of the process of, uh, called hydraulic fracturing, um, otherwise known as fracking, to extract natural gas and oil from the earth. Um, the debate is kind of focused on whether or not these two are related um, or if the, nat or the seismic activity is the result of natural tectonics. Um, so kind of jumping right in, my main point, my main points are that fracking does cause micro earthquakes um, in, uh, this is a micro earthquake is a, an earthquake below a magnitude of two. Um, these are kind of overlooked in most cases because they cause little damage. However, I think it's still important and here's why. Uh, there was a paper produced by this guy uh, Van Aja might be a girl. I actually don't know what gender that name is for. Um, and so they addressed increased seismic activity in the Netherlands. Um, in the Netherlands, there were there are currently 125 fields. Uh, 16 of them have been pretty conclusively, well, they say are conclusively linked to earthquakes because the epicenter of the earthquake was basically pinpointed with the wells that were used for this hydraulic fracturing. Um, there have been about 350 earthquakes over the last two decades. Uh, really they've only caused light damage and social anxiety, but the correlation between the well location and the epicenter of the earthquakes is kind of, it's you can't overlook that. Um, so another thing that I'd like to point out is that uh, fracking also leads to a process called wastewater injection. It's kind of the way they get rid of the fluids that they use to flush out um, the minerals that they're extracting, so like the natural gas and oil. Um, so the wastewater injection uh, is one of two ways to get rid of this wastewater. Um, the other way is to actually send them through treatment plants, which is really costly and expensive due to the fact that there's a lot of chemicals that are used for fracking. Um, so there are, uh, according to the EPA, there's 180,000 class two wells. Those are the kind of wells that uh, wastewater injection is allowed. Um, of those 180,000, about 20% are used for wastewater injection. Um, it means there are approximately 36,000 wastewater injection wells in the United States. Um, that only recently became a thing. I think uh, in the 1970s was when all this wastewater injection started happening. Um, and then, I don't know, the largest earthquake that has happened uh, is believed to have been the result. Uh, 5.6 magnitude earthquake in central Oklahoma. Um, it was believed that it uh, this wastewater injection weakened a pre-existing fault line by injecting fluid into this deep well that basically it destabilized the fault line and allowed this quake to happen. Um, so those are kind of all the things I have to say. Questions, your side, okay. go for it. Okay, so I do have a question. Mm -hmm. Since you're correlating um, increases in earthquakes with fracking activity, and correlation doesn't equal causation, mm -hmm. what do you have that makes it a causal relationship and not just a correlation? So that paper with the Netherlands guy, uh, one of the things that he looked at, he looked at a uh, there were three kind of uh, factors, one of which was pressure drop. Um, pressure drop, it is, in terms of physics, it's basically uh, you have removed material creating a void which was supporting surrounding structures around it, and so 
this pressure drop, once it reaches certain levels, things have to happen. Um, like, uh, because there's also another factor is, um, so at certain ground levels, there are, uh, like just the weight of all the earth above it, basically that's kind of the pressure. And so th by taking away this pressure that's supporting everything above, you're destabilizing every rock layer above that. And that's kind of what he looked at. He took core samples from like all the way through this area that was experiencing earthquakes and then was like, all right, what pressure drop is all of this occurring at? And he found that I think it was 70 KSI, 70,000 pounds. Um, once the pressure drop had been, had reached that amount, an earthquake almost always happened. Um, so that's kind of the key factor that he was looking at um, to link these two. Okay, and fracking is happening all over the place. Mm -hmm. And so where they're seeing these earthquakes happening with fracking, is it just along fault lines in certain states, or is it everywhere that they're fracking, or is it... They are... So kind of what happens is when they decide where they're going to frack, they look at pre-existing fault lines that are already there. That's why you don't see fracking near like the San Andreas fault line, known to be incredibly active. It's usually in more... I don't know if you were, I think it was like our second module or something like that. We looked at the plate tectonics and everything. Uh, and like, there's just not a whole lot of major plates that run right through the center of the United States. Um, however, there are a bunch of minor ones. It's kind of impossible. The, it's happening everywhere. There are also tech, like there, there are plates everywhere. Micro plates, I think there's about, I wrote this in my in one of my presentations, there's like 160,000 plates that move. And we only concern ourselves with the major one. Um, but to answer your question, it is happening everywhere. The earthquakes, however, have been happening predominantly in central where plates are, plates are not. Okay. So. That is all my questions. Okay. So my side is that earthquakes are happening through plate tectonics, which is natural. Mm -hmm. So there is significant evidence showing the increasing number of earthquakes is due to plate tectonics. Plate tectonics is a theory that the Earth's outer layer is divided into several sections called plates. These plates glide over the mantle, which is the inner rocky layer above the core. As adjacent plates come into contact with each other, they create energy. The energy can only build up so much before it has to be released. The release in energy is what causes an earthquake. Earthquakes have happened and will continue to happen because plates are constantly moving. Once an earthquake happens, the process just starts all over again. We can now track the movements of plates with satellites to be able to see exactly how much they move, where they're moving, which direction, to track what they are probably going to do in the future. Um, an article from Ultra Science 2015 had a study that explained that the increase in earthquakes was being caused by the North American plate. The North American plate was previously thought to be whole, but the latest data indicates that there's actually been a split. They say that an intensive formation of a split takes place, which then transitions into a rift along the border that divides the territory of the present-day U.S. into two halves. They say that the increased number of earthquakes in Oklahoma is related to the formation of the continental rift of North America. A continental rift is a, the area where the continental lithosphere is stretching apart. and. This can be thought of like a rubber band, the more you stretch a rubber band apart, the more energy it stores, and then when it gives, it releases that energy, except in this case, the release in energy will cause a disturbance on the Earth's surface, like an earthquake. Further evidence to support this theory is that there are similar tectonic patterns in other areas. I think it's important to note that when people talk about an increase in earthquakes, they are often talking about earthquakes that are happening along fault lines. These faults are places where the Earth's crust has been cracked and therefore the rock that was there gets displaced. 
We currently don't know how many faults there are, but we do know that the energy release associated with rapid movements along active faults is the cause of most earthquakes. These faults are created by plate tectonics, which just further shows how plate tectonics is causing an increase in earthquakes. And since earthquakes are being caused naturally and we can't stop the plates from moving, I think that it's important to worry about preparing for the future earthquakes. And so, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I had a question and then you answered my question. Um, what evidence did, did, I don't know if you brought this up, what evidence was there for this separation of the two plates? Like how, what, um, what did they do to figure that out? Do you know? I wish I could say that I did, mm -hmm. but I believe they... I don't know. Okay. Sorry. Because <laughs> everything else sounds great. I just did not even know a major plate could uh, split. Right. And so, yeah. Um, well, okay. Cool. Uh, did you have a conclusion written for this? Wasn't quite sure, like, do we agree to disagree how a debate conclusion works? Yeah, um, I think we agree to disagree. Okay. It's what I think. I don't know. I don't really do debates, so... Yeah. Well, uh, you brought up some great points. I mean... Me too. I had, ne I had never considered the fact that a major plate could split, but if that's true, that's... Uh, I could definitely be it. Right. Um, how it, like, one thing about this debate was that it was pretty narrow. I thought... Like, it was oddly specific. Um, right. If we could have, like, argued whether or not fracking should continue. Right. There are a whole bunch of other reasons I would say not. But this, I don't know. I Originally, I, I was, like, I thought that fracking was not good. Mm -hmm. And so when I was going to do um, natural plate tectonics, mm -hmm. I was a little bit worried. Yep. But yeah. I, I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to find a whole lot just because it was so narrow. But, right. uh, well, I learned something. Made, Me too. I, apparently you did too. Um, that's great. I don't know how to end so this. Cool. I'm just going to keep rambling. Good job. And then I'm going to hit <laughs> stop recording.